we've got started on the right to farm policy. We're not exactly where we want to be yet on that, but that was something that we uh, we said that we wanted to to take on as an issue. And again, I hope we'll be doing more work on that next year. We've funded what will be the, the largest uh, contribution towards a regional water security uh, project in the history of New South Wales, and that's up to $500 million for a pipeline from the Murray to Broken Hill. Now that is a significant investment when it comes to obviously the water security for Broken Hill, but it will have productive flow on benefits uh, to, uh, to others throughout the, the, uh, the system when we're able to uh, decouple uh, the water supply issues for Broken Hill from the Nindy as its sole uh, source of water. So that's a, another uh, big investment. Uh, we were able to introduce and get through the Parliament legislation to start a poppy industry here in New South Wales. Again, one thing that we're, we're very big on is making sure that we look at uh, where our producers can look to for the future and, um, and take on those challenges and, and get, uh, get, get legislation or, or other, um, other things that we need to do as a government uh, through to then allow industry to pick up the ball and run with it. We've also had a separation between Water New South Wales and DPI Water. Again, this is something that industry was asking us to, to clarify who was doing what function and role and to re remove duplication when it comes to service delivery and that uh, clear alliance of delineation between Water New South Wales and, and DPI Water is something that we saw the first uh, implementation of during the operation of the dams, particularly uh, during the recent flood events. And uh, when we look at how our dams were operated during those events, and we contrast um, the feeling of how some of the other dams, like Hume Dam, which is not operated by New South Wales, um, was done during those events. Uh, pleasing thing from where I stand from, there was people that were complimentary about clearer decision making and clearer lines of delineation between the agencies. Um, having New South Wales farmers here, we're also happy to report that we've just about uh, just about ticked off the majority of the uh, of the 15 commitments we made uh, with the uh, memorandum of understanding that we took to the 2015 election, and obviously a, a, a cornerstone of that was the biodiversity uh, legislation that we got through the parliament. But there have been some challenges throughout the year. Um, I mentioned earlier that we've seen some recent discussions on water that have uh, have been popping out of South Australia and, uh, and also um, made their way to Canberra. I must say that um, if there ever was one time that I was disappointed that my flight was delayed, it was the night that I was flying to Adelaide um, for the uh, quiet gathering of water ministers and um, we sat on the tarmac in Sydney and by the time I got to Adelaide and got into the dinner there was a, a seat that was vacant and the South Australia um, minister had, uh, had uh, which is my words carefully, um, decided that he didn't want to leave, uh, didn't want to stay at the dinner and express some um, pretty colourful language in the meeting and, and it led to a very interesting meeting the next day. <coughs> we now see the, the Murray-Darling Basin issue being brought um, into uh, negotiations and other conversations about legislation that's got nothing to do with, uh, with the industries that, or the communities that are impacted by the, the Murray-Darling Basin um, conversation. In New South Wales, we've certainly done a lot of our heavy lifting. We've, uh, we've already reached 70% of our uh, 1,311 gigalitre target here in New South Wales. Unfortunately, a large portion of that um, happened when we saw you know, 1,165 gigalitres that were directly bought out of New South Wales. And we know that just coming in and buying water has an impact on the communities that rely upon the industries that, that can turn that water into some of the numbers that we're celebrating in the report that we see today. We know that that productive water is one of the reasons why we stand here today and celebrate a AAA, uh, AAA credit rating being maintained by the nation because of the diversity and the input and the hard work that our regional communities and the primary industry sector as a whole in New South Wales have been able to contribute to the economy. We've seen the release of the Northern Basin Review and uh, the, the lowering of the target uh, when it comes to, uh, to the Northern Basin Review, but the work from that review has confirmed what a lot of us knew, that, that removing that productive water is having a, an impact on some of those communities that rely upon them. Um, up to 21% of job um, losses in some northern New South Wales communities are a result of, of what's happened there. We looked at, uh, it's looked at things like 60 jobs in Warren, 
looked at 80 jobs gone in more already, and we know that that has a significant impact. So in New South Wales, we have been consistent all the way through when it comes to the debate about the water. We, we know that we want outcomes. We know that we want a healthy river system. But we also know that we want communities and industries to be able to be part of regional New South Wales as we do this. We know that to date there's been pain. We know that, and what the Northern Basin Review has shown, the impacts of what happens when you just take that productive water out. And that's why we've been consistent in saying that we get the outcomes that we want with a healthy Murray-Darling Basin through uh, infrastructure, through water savings projects that, uh, that are, are on farm and, and the utilisation of infrastructure. We know that we need to be flexible. And when I say flexible, we need to look at other ways that we can get the environmental outcomes. Um, Non-flow related projects, the eradication of things like carp out of, uh, out of the system are all going to provide great environmental benefits. But whatever we do and whatever we deliver, it has to be on a triple bottom line approach. That's where we have an issue with the conversation that's been happening in Canberra with the 450. The 450, which was thrown in at the 11th hour to get South Australia across the line, and I know a lot of industry didn't actually sign up to, the 450 and the intergovernmental agreement that we've signed clearly states that this is not a plan for a plan's sake. It is a triple bottom line approach that must have a, a socio-economic socio result that is, is not uh, putting our communities in a worse off position. And that's our position, it has been all along. We want to see infrastructure, we want to see flexibility, we don't want to see non-strategic buybacks of productive water out of New South Wales. So we'll consistently stand up for that. I'm really disappointed to see the future of the primary industry sector, the future of our regional communities used as a bargaining chip, or for the want of a better word, bribery, just to get uh, some votes in something that's absolutely unrelated to, to what the sector um, and, and what the plan is there to achieve. So that's something that we'll continue to talk about as we, as we move on and, and move into 2017 and something that we will um, absolutely be a strong advocate for for New South Wales. It's about outcomes. It's about using models to inform decisions, not make decisions. It's about working with the communities that are impacted by those decisions. And it's about making sure that when we stand here next year, that 17% is getting closer and closer to the 30% that we're targeting. Because when we provide the productive water and certainty in those communities, we know that we have the best within the industry to be able to turn that into something amazing and the country as a whole benefits. And that's what we've seen off the, some of the results we've seen today. So what does next year bring? Next year is a year of implementation from where I stand. We've got a lot of legislation through, we've got some policy settings, we've steered the ship in the direction that we want to go and next year is about implementation. We've started that with biodiversity, we've been able to get $28 million straight away to start um, recruiting and employing uh, the unit of people that are going to be implementing the biodiversity reforms right, right across uh, the state. We know that we've, uh, we've uh, got a report that we're, we're reviewing at the moment from IPART in relation to topics like multi peril crop insurance and we hope to be able to move into, into that space uh, once we've added, uh, considered all of the recommendations from there. We know we've got the NRC pest, uh, pest animal review um, uh, that we're, we're considering as well. Uh, obviously the Murray-Darling Basin, uh, but next year's about implementation. We've done a lot of work this year. It wouldn't have been possible without uh, having close relationships with stakeholders, many of which are in the room. One thing that uh, we want to make sure that we do, that we uh, head in the right direction and we take industry along with us. Merry Christmas to everyone. It's a good year to, to, uh, to well, it's good to get to this end, this point of the year, I can, I can say that. Um, uh, I was speaking to Derek earlier and I asked him how his harvest was going. and. Uh, it took him about 10 seconds to start talking because the smile on his face was so big. Um, but the numbers that we're seeing across the state are fantastic. There's real optimism in the sector. We've had a, some difficulties with some of the flooding, but what that does is means that we've got some strong water allocations uh, as we move forward. Hopefully as a government, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're being uh, a help and not a hindrance. 2017, I think, is going to be a fantastic year for the primary industry sector. No better way to illustrate that 
than who we are celebrating today, and that's our Farmers of the Year. As I said at the start, they all come from diverse backgrounds, diverse operations, and, and when you look and you hear some of their stories, it shows how strong New South Wales is when it comes to the primary industry sector. Thank you, Ben, and the committee for allowing us to celebrate that here today and, and for the rest of the, the stakeholders and, and supporters. Thank you, everyone. Have a Merry Christmas. Um, ben will have to avoid his uh, in-laws um, <laughs> uh, like rabbits. Um, but, ladies and gentlemen, keep safe, rest up. We've got a lot of work to do next year. We're going to need your help. Thank you.